Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. For the second time in 2020, we are going to compare the major streaming services that is YouTube TV versus Hulu Plus Live TV versus AT&T TV Now versus Sling and a few others as well. But before we do that, I'm gonna ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already, and if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So I did this video back in January and said at the time that these streaming services change often and I wondered what the shelf life of that video was going to be and about six months later now the shelf life I think has expired and so a new video looking at these things over again packages have changed prices have changed and so it is a whole new equation if you are either looking to switch or cutting the cord for the first time. So we're gonna look first at what I think of as the big four of streaming services, and then we'll look at three more of them. Now, if you are cutting the cord for the first time, you might see that there's a big difference in price between some of these, and you should know that part of the reason for that is because some of these services are going to include your local channels, and some of them are not. So if you are someone that can pick up your local channels through an HD antenna and you only want to get like you know a few extra channels that are sort of the cable-ish channels or what we think of traditionally as cable channels you could go cheaper if you need those local channels because you can't pick up your local channels well then you will probably want one of the more expensive services but you want to make sure you're comparing them apples to apples to get what you want. So let's start with YouTube TV because this streaming service is in the news as I make this video for increasing their prices by $15 per month all of a sudden. So $64.99 per month, think of it as $65. Now you're getting a lot for your $65, including most of what you would think of as the traditional cable channels. So you're getting your big news channels, your CNN, uh, Fox News, MSNBC. You're gonna get uh, Disney channels. You are going to get ESPN, Cartoon Network, uh, Nick, but not Nick Jr. You are going to get uh, PBS. None of the other streaming services have PBS. So there are a lot of things here. Now, even despite that, there still are some channels that you are not going to get, including the History Channel and Lifetime and perhaps others as well. And that brings up an important side note. With all of these streaming services, if you have a must-have channel, don't assume that it is part of that particular streaming service because for whatever reason, the way these channels are purchased by these various streaming services, some of them simply don't have some of the channels that you might assume they have. So you might go to their website and say, oh, look at this, they have 75 channels or 100 channels or whatever it is, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have the channel that you are most interested in. So definitely make sure that you check Check the specific channel lineup of anything that you're interested to make sure you're gonna get that channel that you want. Now, if you care about DVR and simultaneous streams, that sort of thing, unlimited DVR with YouTube TV and the things that you store stay there for nine months before going away. You can have three simultaneous streams, meaning three people in your household can be using YouTube TV on different devices at the same time. You can have up to six user profiles, meaning that different people in the household can have their own profile that shows you know, what they specifically watched before, maybe give them recommendations based on what they have watched, that sort of thing. So it's not just one account and everyone kind of shares it. You can sort of have your own account within that larger account. And then finally, if you're looking for original programming or maybe a database of old TV episodes that you can binge watch through various series, that is really not YouTube TV's game. Now, they did have YouTube originals that they started to do, and they basically abandoned that path in favor of giving you sort of more of the traditional cable channels. So if you're looking for that, you're not going to get it here versus some of the other ones that do have original programming and often very desirable original programming. YouTube TV, not so much in that game. All right, let's look at Hulu Plus Live TV, $54.99 per month. Think of it as $55, 10 bucks cheaper than YouTube TV as I make this video. We'll see how long it lasts. An extensive lineup of channels, your major news networks, uh, Disney, ESPN. It does have the History Channel and Lifetime, which YouTube TV did not. Plenty of other of the channels that you would expect. Now, it also does not have some of the channels that YouTube TV does have, so no PBS, no Nick or Nick Jr., no uh, Comedy Central, and there are others as well, no NBA, no MLB TV, so less than YouTube TV has, but for a lot of people, maybe enough. Hulu Plus Live TV gives you 50 hours of DVR storage without an expiration, so as long as you want those to sit there, they will continue to sit there 
two simultaneous streams so you can have two different locations within a household uh, using Hulu Plus Live TV at the same time. Six user accounts again so that uh, everyone in a household can have their own account that shows what they watched and all that sort of thing. You can actually pay a little bit more if you want to and increase the DVR and increase the number of streams that you get but the basic package is that 50 hours of DVR and the two simultaneous streams. Now, one of the other things that makes Hulu Plus Live TV attractive is that in addition to those TV channels, you also are getting Hulu. So Hulu has a standalone service or you can buy it as part of this package and Hulu is giving you original programming and it's giving you the backlog of TV series and movies that you can watch on demand. So things like Little Fires Everywhere, uh, Handmaid's Tale, and there are plenty of other things as well. So those are some desirable series or movies that people want to watch. So if that is something that you're into and you know there's going to be some you know hot new series and it's only on Hulu, well that might be a reason to have Hulu Plus Live TV and make that your choice. Next is AT&T TV Now, which is the AT&T service that competes with Hulu Plus Live TV and YouTube TV. Now, AT&T cannot make up their mind what they're doing, so you're going to see other services from AT&T and it's easy to get confused. So AT&T TV Now has a plus package which is different than it was six months ago. They have a plus package that is $55 and what that gets you is essentially a similar uh, situation to those other two that I've already talked about. So you're gonna get your uh, big channels like your Disney channels and your news channels and all of those sort of things. You're gonna get Nick Jr. which the other two did not have so there's something that is a little different from AT&T but they also have less overall so you're not going to get some of the other channels that you would find from YouTube TV or from Hulu Plus Live TV. So no History Channel, no A&E, no NBA or MLB. A lot of things missing from AT&T TV Now as well. Now AT&T TV Now does have a $80 package that you can choose which includes HBO Max as well and Cinemax, but then you're getting into $80 per month. And you can choose, if you want to, to just get that plus package of $55 and you could add HBO for $15. So if you wanted HBO, you could just add it that way instead of paying $80 just to get pretty much HBO and Cinemax and then a few uh, extra sports channels as well. So AT&T TV, AT TV now, which is very difficult to say, is a decent service, but you can't sort of trust AT&T to keep their service anything the same as it used to be. For a while, they were sort of like how they are now, and then they changed and forced HBO into all of the packages, and now they've taken HBO back out and made it sort of, you know, standalone as an add-on. So this is what you're getting as I make this video, but you have to be a little wary of AT&T as to whether what you're getting now is what you're going to be getting six months from now. AT&T TV now is generous on the storage end. 500 hours of programming can be put on that DVR. It does have a 90-day expiration, so once you put it on, you're eventually going to want to actually watch it. Three simultaneous streams, so you can watch it uh, three different devices, three different places at the same time. You don't have individual user profiles as I make this video, at least that is my understanding. AT&T TV Now does not have its own original programming in the way that Hulu does. Now obviously, like I said, you could add HBO, but that's another 15 bucks a month and you could add HBO to any of the others too. So that one kind of doesn't count. So it doesn't have original programming in that same way where it is right now uh, you know, included as part of that $55. So when I look at AT&T TV Now versus the others, it seems like there is less programming and so I'm a little less inclined to think of it positively. One other quick note on AT&T TV now, when I made this video in January, I got some comments of people telling me that if you had AT&T wireless service, I think it was unlimited service, you could get a $25 per month price break on AT&T TV now. I don't see any information anywhere that says that that is true when I look around the internet. So I don't know if it doesn't exist or if it's something that you have to be a customer first or if that has just you know gone away and it is not true anymore. So you might want to call AT&T and ask them if that is the situation, You know, if you're a wireless customer. But as of now, I don't believe it's true. All right, now the last of what I consider the big four is Sling TV. Now Sling is a different beast. YouTube TV, Hulu Plus Live TV, and AT&T TV Now all offer you your local channels 
in addition to those traditional cable channels, Sling TV does not offer you your local channels, which is either good or bad depending on what your current situation is. If you can pull in your local channels with an HD antenna and you are happy that you have those and you don't need to worry about that, well then maybe Sling TV is the answer for you because you can get sort of those traditional cable channels and pay a lot less than you would with any of those other services. So Sling offers three different packages and that is either a good thing or a bad thing depending on what channels you are looking for. So you can buy the blue package at $30 per month or you could choose the orange package at $30 per month or you could choose blue plus orange, get them both for $45 per month. Now if you are someone that already is getting your local channels and maybe you just have one or two other channels you want, maybe you want ESPN and you could just choose to get the one package that has ESPN and then you could pay $30 and have your uh, local channels already and you know really cut down on that monthly bill but if you're someone that maybe wants you know two channels that are in the blue package and two channels that are in the orange package and you don't care about any of the rest of them you'll still have to pay $45 per month to get both packages if you want them so that is a good thing and or a bad thing depending on what channels you want for example, Sling's blue package has what you think of as your major news networks, your CNN, your uh, Fox News, uh, MSNBC. It's got Nick Jr., which is desirable for some people and many other channels as well, but it doesn't have ESPN and it doesn't have Disney. However, the orange package does have ESPN and it does have Disney, but it doesn't have Fox News. It doesn't have Nick Jr. So you have to decide what you want. Are you going to pay to get the full package at 45 or are you going to choose the uh, channels that are most crucial to you to get one of those $30 packages? In terms of some of the extras, you get 10 hours of DVR time with Sling. There is no original programming with Sling, so it's just those channels that we've already talked about. You don't get individual user profiles with Sling, so you can't have multiple people in a household who all sort of have their own thing going on on their own uh, you know, mini account within it. Now, one of the weird things about Sling is in terms of simultaneous streams, if you have the blue package, you get three simultaneous streams. So three people can watch at the same time in different locations on different devices. If you have the orange package, one stream. If you get both of them, four streams. So that feels a little bit like they are just kind of trying to divide things up to make it so that you will pay for both of them there. So there's a kind of a weird uh, strategy that Sling uses here that seems like it's trying to push everyone to that $45 package. Now I'm going to talk about three other services, but before I do that, I want to talk real quick about my own experience with the big four that I just talked about. I have used three out of the four of them. When I first cut the cord, I tried to use an HD antenna and have Sling, and it worked okay for a while, but overall I ended up being unhappy, did not get the reception I wanted on my local channels with the HD antenna. So for me, I finally said I'm going to pay a little bit more and go to one of these other services. So I got rid of Sling and then I moved on to AT&T TV Now, which actually was Direct TV Now at the time. They rolled in HBO, changed all their pricing and basically drove me out because it got so expensive. So then I moved on to Hulu Plus Live TV. And of course, AT&T TV Now changed back basically to what they were when I had them. But anyway, I have Hulu Plus Live TV Now Back in January, they had just increased their prices and I was ready to jump to YouTube TV, but my daughter was in the middle of watching, binging on uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and so I got lazy while I waited for her to finish. And I never did it, it's been sort of a distracting year. So anyway, I never made the jump to uh, YouTube TV and now they've increased their prices $15 and so now I'm not inclined to go there. So Hulu Plus Live TV has worked out pretty well for me. I'm overall pretty happy with the service. I think all of them are fine in terms of giving you the channels you want. So if you see the channel you want for the most part, you're probably going to be happy if the DVR stuff and the simultaneous streams matter to you, then obviously that comes into play also. All right, those three other services to consider Fubo TV, which is more like YouTube TV and Hulu Plus Live TV and AT&T TV Now, and then it gives you local channels plus more. 
as I make this video, they're just increasing the prices. The lowest package, $59.99, think of it as 60 bucks. Now, the weird thing about Fubo TV is that it's not exactly what you would expect in terms of what you get. There are channels that are there that you're like, oh, okay, whatever, and then there are a lot of channels missing. For example, as I make this video, there was no ABC and no ESPN, even though a lot of what Fubo offers are sports channels. So you think that that would be part of it. So no Disney here, a lot of things missing from Fubo TV. So maybe right for some people, but you definitely would want to, you know, look closely before you jump in there to make sure you're getting things you want and not missing something that you were hoping to have. Fubo TV giving you 30 hours of DVR time. You can have two simultaneous streams, no profiles for individual people within your family and no original programming from Fubo in terms of TV series or movies. Next up, Philo TV, more like a sling competitor, only $20 per month, but you're not getting a ton here. So you're not getting your local channels. You're getting sort of a smattering of 40 to 50 other channels. So you are getting things like Food Network and the History channel Nick and Nick jr. So some decent channels here, but then you're not getting things like ESPN or Disney or Fox News or CNN So a very limited package But if there are enough channels there or the right channels there for you and you are getting your local channels via an antenna Philo could be a good choice on the extras end Philo does give you unlimited DVR storage But anything that you store does expire in 30 days. You can have three simultaneous streams of content going on different devices in a home, you can have 10 user profiles. So if you have a very large family, everybody can have their own profile within Philo. And then finally, there is Vidgo, a Sling or Philo competitor. You're not getting your local channels. It's $39.99 per month. Think of it as $40. So a decent lineup here. Vidgo is a little confusing to me. I've never actually used it, but it seems that maybe the interface is a little different in terms of how Vidgo talks about the channels that it has. It sounds like you have sort of individual apps, I guess, on screen that you have to go through for each one of the individual channels and instead of there being sort of a uh, user face that you might expect and that you would get from some of these other services that allow you to quickly, you know, move between channels. I'm just not sure. In terms of the channels that they show, a decent lineup, so you'd have to actually, you know, take a look at what is there and what is not there, see how it compares to Philo or Sling if you are going that route. But if anybody has Vidgo, if you happen to be watching this and you have used Vidgo, I'd be very interested to know exactly how it works because there is some strange language on their website in terms of exactly what you're getting. Vidgo says they have 72 hours of DVR storage, not sure when that expires, three simultaneous streams no original programming as far as I know with Vidgo and they don't have individual user accounts either as far as I know. So that's where we stand as we get into the second half of 2020. Now, obviously, you can add Netflix or HBO Max or Disney Plus or any of that stuff on top of these packages as well, depending on what you want. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about the fact that the prices of these streaming services are continuing to go up and that I had some uh, thoughts or something that I had learned recently that sort of made me understand why it is happening or why we're in the situation that we are in. And there's an interesting article in Fast Company Magazine and basically what they said is, the short story is that when YouTube TV or Hulu or, Hulu or whoever is going to buy these channels or license these channels to show them to you, the creators, because of a lot of media consolidation, they own multiple channels and they sell them all as a package. So if you want ESPN, you're gonna have to buy all these other things on top of ESPN. If you want uh, you know, Fox News, you're gonna have to buy all these other things. If you want the Discovery Channel, you're gonna have to buy all these other things. And so these services, these streaming services, they then have to pay X amount, so they're gonna have to charge you X amount on the other end in order to make a profit. Now that part, we kind of, you know, kind of intuitively know that already, right? But the other thing that we probably sort of feel, but we don't know for sure, it felt like sort of a bait and switch when some of these streaming services showed up because they were really cheap and you were getting a lot of what you could already get with cable, right? But what actually was happening was they were sort of 
luring us in with a price that they could not sustain. So uh, I believe it was DirecTV Now was the first of the lot in terms of really showing a low price to people. And then all the other ones felt like they had to sort of be in line with that price to start off with, but then all of them realized that they could not sustain the prices that they were charging. And so they have slowly crept up and up. And because you have this media consolidation where very few companies own like you know pretty much all the entertainment that we want they can drive a hard bargain with these streaming services and with the cable companies and charge more and more and force more and more channels onto them and charge a higher price for that bundle so we as consumers end up having to decide what we're going to pay for and what we're not and I think what you know history has so far shown is that we're willing to pay more and more and more in order to continue to have television. So at some point, we're gonna have to decide to say no to certain things if we want any of this to sort of be reined in or the prices to ever be at a level that feel acceptable. So while you may still have the dream of a la carte pricing, you just choose the channels you want and pay for those individually, that is not going to happen anytime in the near future, if ever. That is it for this video. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, put them in that comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching, and as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews, we talk personal finance, we talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thank you for watching, bye.